This video is sponsored by Squarespace. More on them later in this video. Until now, I've never actually seen a monitor with a KTC logo. And I guess that's true for most of you as well. KTC branded monitors are pretty much brand new, and this is one of their first products to hit the market. So naturally, I'm a bit skeptical of what to expect. I mean, can this monitor really be as good as those from the big brands that have a lot of experience making and selling monitors? Well, actually, KTC as a monitor manufacturer have been making monitors and monitor components for a few decades now. And as far as I was able to find out, they've already been making monitors as an OEM for brands like Viotech, Pixio, Monoprice and a few others. So KTC is everything else but brand new to the monitor market and they're actually quite a sizable company, roughly half the size of ASUS in terms of their number of employees and enterprise value. So I kind of hope that KTC can use their experience as an OEM to tackle the established monitor brands. Now KTC sent over the sample for this review, but they don't get any input on this video whatsoever. But I like to mention that they actually offered sending me money to review their products, which I of course declined. So to be very clear, this is an honest review and I did not receive any money from KTC. Though I have to say that offering money in exchange for a review <laughs> kinda leaves a bit of taste. Anyway, this being out of the way, let's take a look at the monitor. This is a classic 165Hz 1440p gaming monitor with a 27-inch IPS panel. So KTC are taking on a very crowded segment that already has a lot of really good monitors at a similar price point. The KTC monitor comes in at around $280, at least with the $50 discount that's available at the time of making this review. Now I'm gonna assume that this basically is a permanent discount, because otherwise the H27T22 would be more expensive than some of its strongest competitors. Of course I've got the KTC monitor and a few of its competitors linked down below in case you wanna check prices or buy something. Now one of the best monitors of this class is the G27 3QF by MSI. And it can be had for similar money. So the question really is if the H27T22 is good enough to justify picking it up over the MSI. Now according to KTZ, this monitor actually uses an AUO 8.2 panel, which can basically only mean that it uses the M27 0 Den 0 8.2 which coincidentally is the same panel that the MSI G273QF and QPF use as well. So that's actually very promising. I couldn't really confirm that KTC actually used said AUO panel as the factory menu shows something different, but I would guess that this is just their name for the AUO panel with a custom backlight. And the high maximum brightness kind of supports the theory that this uses a different backlight. 420 nits is about 85 nits brighter than the MSI eye and actually very bright for a monitor of this class. And the low setting is just 40 nits, meaning we get plenty of adjustment range. The contrast ratio is close to 1200 to 1, which is pretty respectable for an IPS panel, and about 300 points higher than my sample of the MSI G27 3QF. Keep in mind though that others got samples of the G27 3QF that also measured around 1200 to 1, so I was a bit unlucky there, but seemingly received a decent sample of the H27T22. Now this monitor also accepts HDR signals, but there's no local dimming or anything like that, and the native contrast just isn't high enough to call this real HDR. The brightness also stays about the same no matter if HDR is turned on or off, so using the HDR mode on this monitor doesn't really make too much sense. So I just use the SDR mode for content consumption and gaming. Now, Colors look nice and highly saturated on this monitor, which is exactly what I would expect from this panel. With a color gamut volume of about 1.3 times the size of sRGB, this is our typical wide color gamut monitor. The DCI-P3 coverage also is very respectable, which is nice to see. When it comes to color accuracy though, out of the box, there definitely is some room for improvement. Though I like that the color hues are pretty much on point, and the gamma looks decent as well, even though it's a bit too high towards the bottom end, resulting in dark tones being almost black. The sRGB mode has a slightly better gamma tracking, though unfortunately, this mode is just a bad joke. It doesn't even clamp the color gamma to sRGB, which literally is the purpose of an sRGB mode. On top of that, it leaves us with a super warm yellowish white point 
We can't even correct in this mode. So I'd recommend dialing in some custom settings instead. And the color accuracy I was able to achieve that way is actually pretty good. Of course, a full calibration and profiling will lead to the best results. And this monitor does calibrate very well. In case you don't have access to a colorimeter, I'd suggest using these settings. And I'd also recommend applying the ICC profile that you can download from the video description. Now, before we talk about all the gaming related stuff, here's a word about the sponsor of this video. Squarespace is an all-in-one solution for your website needs. Whether you want to sell your products on an online store or just want to start a personal blog, Squarespace has all the tools you need to sell physical or digital products on just making a good looking blog. Creating a website is just a matter of a few minutes. And if you want to make your website stand out, the design panel offers hundreds of custom settings that allow for deep customization. And Squarespace automatically optimizes your website for mobile as well, making sure that it looks good on any screen size. You can try out the design process for free and when you're ready to launch your own website, use the code TECHLESS to save 10% of your first purchase of a website or a domain or just go to squarespace.com slash techless. Back to the video. Now we'll talk about the best overdrive mode in such in a minute. But while you're in the settings, you should also turn on the FreeSync slash G-Sync setting, which weirdly enough is turned off by default. As the monitor is not certified as G-Sync compatible by NVIDIA, you also have to manually enable G-Sync in the NVIDIA control panel in case you have an NVIDIA GPU. Despite the lack of an official NVIDIA certification, G-Sync works totally flawless. I did all my usual tests and couldn't detect any defects like flickering or stuff like that. And LFC kicks in at around 55 FPS by the way. Now I've played quite a few hours of Valorant and a few other FPS games on this monitor and I have to say that this definitely is one of the fastest gaming monitors of this class. We'll take a look at the response time measurements in a bit and of course I've also used Brabus's pursuit camera technique to capture what moving objects actually look like on this monitor. Now KTC provides us with four different overdrive settings and just like with virtually any other monitor brand, KTC's highest overdrive setting is also much too high, causing a lot of visible overshoot. The low setting is pretty much perfect though, at least at 165 Hz. And the response time measurements confirm that. The overshoot is a bit on the higher side, but this is acceptable still. So the overdrive is really tuned to the edge, which leads to fast response times, but also a slight amount of visible overshoot with brighter colors. But for gaming, they've struck a pretty good balance here as the faint overshoot isn't really noticeable in game. Well, at least as long as you're gaming at the maximum refresh rate. The low overdrive setting is still acceptable at 144 Hz, but below that, the overshoot is starting to get noticeable. If you're a console gamer and only are using 120 and 60 Hz, you definitely want to set the overdrive to off instead. The same is true if you're on PC and are playing a lot of games that struggle to keep up with the 165 Hz refresh rate. But with the overdrive set to off, we're leaving some performance at 165 Hz on the table, as this mode seems to be the native performance of the panel with the overdrive actually being turned completely off. So if you want to always have the best response times, you gotta change the overdrive mode for different refresh rates, which is a bit annoying. But that's unfortunately extremely common with many other monitors as well. Compared to other monitors of the same class, the H27 T22 can keep up really well. The Lenovo G27 Q-20, for instance, is visibly slower than the KTC. But this is one of the slower monitors of this class. The MSI G27 3QF, on the other hand, is one of the fastest. And the UFO shots of the KTC basically look the same. I'd say KTC are applying a smidge more overdrive, but the differences are so small that I want to call the performance identical. And that's not very surprising, as the KTC is supposed to be using the same panel as the MSI. Now the HP X27Q basically is the toughest competitor of the G27 3QF and yeah all of these three monitors are about as fast as 165Hz IPS monitors can get these days. So in terms of response times the H27 T22 can keep up with the big boys which is great to see for what basically is KTC's first own monitor. Now KTC also implemented a backlight strobing mode, which they call MPRT. 
And this mode actually isn't straight up bad, which certainly is more common than decent backlight strobing implementations. And their MPRT mode is combinable with overdrive. And with the low overdrive setting, this actually looks pretty decent. It's not the clearest backlight strobing mode you'll ever see, and there's some visible overshoot and phosphor decay. But this is definitely usable. But in comparison to the best strobing modes out there, you can clearly see where the KTC monitor is falling short, which is perfectly normal for this class of monitors, and I surely wouldn't expect this monitor to be amazing at backlight strobing. Now, in a sense, this monitor could basically have been made by any other monitor brand like MSI, ASUS or Gigabyte for instance, because it just has a lot of the same strengths and weaknesses that the monitors made by the big brands have as well. I mean, if the logo on the front said like MSI instead of KTC, I honestly wouldn't have been very suspicious. And that's good but also a bit of a shame at the same time. It's obviously great to see that a new brand offers a product that can easily compete with the established brands, and this monitor already feels pretty mature. But at the same time, I wish KTC would have not made a lot of the same mistakes that the big brands constantly make as well, like useless sRGB modes, way too high overdrive settings, and overdrive modes that are only good for the maximum refresh rate. The design and build quality also are very similar to what we're used to seeing from the other brands in this price class. A lot of black plastic that feels sturdy and doesn't look too bad. It's functional, basically. Now, I often mock monitor manufacturers for putting red accents on their monitors, but in this case, I actually wish this was red, because it's actually more of a pink, which probably is a color scheme that goes well with even less setups than the typical gamery red and black. Apart from that, KDC made a really good design choice by going with a small rectangular base instead of legs. This takes up quite a bit less space on the desk and you can get the monitor pretty close without getting in the way of the mouse or keyboard. And that's great if you're playing a lot of FPS games with a large mouse pad and low sensitivity. The stand also allows for basically any adjustment you could ask for. Height is adjustable from unnecessary low to very high. You can also adjust tilt, swivel and pivot. I personally like it when the monitor comes with some sort of marking for the center position so that you can get it back to the horizontal position quickly. It doesn't have that, but that's just a minor complaint. One thing though that I really dislike is the stupid warning message when you're trying to change the brightness. And yeah, I get it. That's probably something they have to show because of some regulation. But this message pops up every single time. It's not like you confirm it once and then it never shows again. No, it pops up again as soon as you're trying to adjust the brightness. Luckily though, this monitor is compatible with third-party control software like Click Monitor DDC, which can change the brightness without getting the pop-up message. I'd highly recommend using software like this. So apart from a few minor annoyances, the H27 T22 is a great monitor. It's extremely similar to the MSI G27 3 QPF, which I recently put into the S tier of my tier list of affordable 1440p monitors. As this monitor can be had for basically the same price and it delivers an almost identical performance, this, objectively speaking, has to be an S tier monitor as well. Still, I'm not sure if I can yet fully recommend buying this monitor. I mean, KTC has a lot of experience as a monitor manufacturer already, and have no reason to believe that this monitor will show any defects in the long run. But still, proof is in the pudding, and KTC is fairly new to the whole selling monitors under their own brand name thing. Only time will tell how well KTC can handle customer service, warranty, and things like that. I'm planning to use this monitor a lot in between reviews as a daily driver, and I'll pin a comment down below in case it develops any defects in the long run. In the meantime, in case the fact that this monitor is not from one of the big name brands doesn't put you off, it is one of the best 1440p gaming monitors under $300. In case that does put you off though, I'd recommend buying one of the big brand monitors that rank high in my tier list instead. I'll link that video on screen right now. Thanks for watching, bis zum nächsten Video.